Third week gaming news. What what would you like to start with? What what news we we starting with here? Well, let, let's start with the the stuff that kind of like broke yesterday. Um, uh, where uh, is this? Uh, well, not Naughty Dog, but Sony News. So, uh, good old Jason Schreier had a big report on Bloomberg um, that was concerning kind of like the the feeling of some studios uh, underneath the Sony banner, yeah. more specifically a San Diego team called Visual Arts Service Group, um, which a lot of people have always assumed is like the secret San Diego team working on shit. Yeah. Turns out they aren't. They, uh, they kind of just help out studios as need be. Most recently, they helped out Naughty Dog uh, with uh, Last of Us 2. Mm-hmm. And, and the story centers mostly on them regarding how they wanted to do some you know, solo work. Uh, they wanted to, you know, work on their own game, lead their own game. And that game in question was a remake of 2013's The Last of Us, which apparently they started development on in 2018. Uh, they then went uh, on to help Naughty Dog with The Last of Us 2 um, and felt, well, the leadership there uh, felt like they weren't getting the support from Sony that they really needed. And after they finished work on The Last of Us 2, the uh, Last of Us remake was handed back to Naughty Dog and Visual Arts Service Group became a support studio again. And that really pissed off executives there and they, a lot of people have promptly left. Yeah. Uh, this. And the, the report ties this sort of sentiment into things that have been happening at uh, Sony Bend, which you might remember as making Days Gone. Mm-hmm. In 2019, they pitched Days Gone 2, and Sony turned them down and said that they were to work on a new Uncharted, which they did for a few. Well, part of the team is helping Naughty Dog work on the Last of Us multiplayer thing that they are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other half were working on an Uncharted, and then executives at or the leadership at Sony Bend were unhappy with working on a property that wasn't theirs. So they requested that Sony give back Uncharted to Naughty Dog. Uh, that apparently happened, although it's not clear if that Uncharted yeah. game is being worked on. But now Sony Bend is working on another game of its own, which it's unclear what it is. But it's not Days Gone 2. So, which is, yeah. I mean, so there's a lot to, to talk about in this story specifically. I want to come out and say that I thought Days Gone was a pretty mediocre game pretty average mm-hmm. game but i'm still sad it's not getting a sequel because i feel that they could have taken criticisms and made a better sequel so i think like the world was like it didn't really hook me but i think there were some good ideas there that i would have liked to have seen maybe fleshed out in a sequel but i don't know like it, it's sad that they're not getting that opportunity i um, think the yeah i i'm in the same boat as you like i didn't like days gone um, I think just like a lot of games, it could have benefited from a sequel, mm. like building on the good ideas that the game had and cutting out the nonsense that it mm. did. Um, but at the same time, I'm not like, I'm not yeah, going to try I'm not, it. Not uh, over it. I think, I think, I think the thing that blows me away is that Days Gone 2, oh, Days Gone was a financial success. Yeah. Um, and, and the sentiment around it has kind of like, becomes stronger over time. Mm. So for a financially successful new IP to just mm. be dropped by Sony it's, like that is the most concerning thing to me. It's, it's weird. Like very strange. And I think, uh, yeah, no, sorry, yeah. go for it. No, uh, go for it. I think the the weirdest thing from this whole story is that the first Last of Us was getting a remake. Yeah, which I'm is super just about that. Which is just like as much as I love Naughty Dog and The Last of Us, I'm like, 2013, look, (laughs) we say this having just spoken at the top of this episode about Resident Evil 1 getting a remake only six years after, but I I don't know, like in my head, it feels like technology hasn't come, you know, it hasn't, like back then it makes sense because, you know, we went from PS1 to GameCube, but it's like a leap in technology. Well, PS1 to PS2 in that generation, it feels like there were huge leaps you know, in what could be done in gaming ways. The jump mm-hmm. from, I mean, 
the last of us was a ps3 game remade a well remade yeah late gen ps3 game remastered for ps4 i'm like i don't know what how it stands to benefit from a remake so soon mm-hmm. but like i i don't know like is this uh, I, maybe they're banking on the fact that they it's the last of us it will sell regardless it's gonna make I, a lot of money. i think from a financial standpoint this is like a sound thing i think mm-hmm. it will sell and i think that it coming well it being in development while the the series is in development is no mistake yeah it's a hundred percent i was thinking the fact that the series will launch in a year or two probably alongside this remake yeah. makes a lot of sense because it's it's like there's a reason the witcher 3 all of a sudden sold a shit ton more after the netflix show it because people watched it having not played the game going oh i can and why cd project red is maybe doing a next gen upgrade for a game that came out in exactly yeah. yeah so from a finan- from a financial point of view it makes sense but mm-hmm. i don't know like i'm i'm just desperate for naughty dog to make something different not because i don't like the last of us or, or uncharted like i think both are great franchises but like I do worry that th- there's a reason Microsoft has this this bad rap of like they don't make anything new because like mm. we do have as good as Forza Horizon is like uh, maybe that's the wrong example but like we are just getting Forza Motorsports and Forza Horizon like yeah, five just getting next, you more know? of that we yeah. got Gears Five it's like it's a great franchise but it you know that studio hasn't really touched anything else we're getting Halo four million <laughs> which yeah if you're a halo fan cool yeah but like microsoft have those like three or four tentpole franchises and it feels like they get a bad rap on exclusives because they haven't had the opportunity to make exclusive like new ip sorry mm. um and i don't know like naughty dog are definitely the the poster child of sony and i just worry that you know do we need an uncharted five yeah like, I, I would play it no doubt um, but I'd just love to see them do something else. It's just confusing to me because along with this report, there is the insinuation that leadership at Sony is doubling down on its like blockbuster studios and the IP that they've created. Mm. So, you know, that's why The Last of Us is being remade. You know what I mean? Um, and I assume that means that Insomniac will be tied into Ratchet and Clank and Spider-Man. Mm. And gorilla will be tied into horizon zero dawn and again all of these properties great games like mm. miles morales came out it was great last of us 2 last year was fantastic mm. they aren't bad games but it's it's sounding more and more like real shades of microsoft in 2010 exactly, where yeah. they had gears of war and halo and forza and they felt like they could do no wrong because all the sequels to those games were fucking incredible yeah um you know, you had Halo 3 and Gears 1 and 2 coming out and then Forza, uh, Forza Motorsport 2 completely redefining what mm. sim racing was. Like, you know, if someone in 2010 said, well, Microsoft is kind of like not allowing creativity in its studio, you say, who cares? They, yeah, they, they're, they're on fire. Mm. But then you look back at that now today and you go, well, that was the start of the problem. Mm. You know, they, dub- they put all of their eggs in- into one basket and, you know... Sony shut down Sony Japan, um, and it seems like they really aren't keen on letting their other lesser-known studios work on individual projects. They just want them to support these big blockbusters, and but, that's disappointing to me. Yeah, and, and it's also weird because like Sony have these little gems that it, maybe they don't do well financially. Like I don't know, but if I think of games like Concrete Genie, which like I haven't mm. played it, but it, for all intents and purposes, it reviewed well. People loved it, and that is a completely different RP, like never been yeah. done before. Like it imagine need ten million copies because it didn't cost that much to make either. You know. What yeah, I mean? and but imagine like a world where Returnal doesn't exist because that studio was just you know merged with Naughty Dog or Insomniac. Yeah. It's like that. It just feels weird to take away these smaller experiments when, like, I don't know, yeah. that could lead to bigger and better things like, and, I, and a, lot of, a lot of sony's success in last generation came from new ip yeah, like 100 percent. yeah you, you had uncharted 4 and last of us 2 but you also had you had the, the people who made fucking killzone do a robot robot dinosaur game with <laughs> exactly Horizon. what the fuck like and that's become a big franchise now you know you mm. had insomniac do spider-man yeah which 
Spider-Man is an established IP, but the game they made was wholly original. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. So like, yeah. Sony, Sony not getting experimental or just doubling down on just sequels, maybe in the short term works, but I, I but, think Naughty Dog resources could be better spent on something that isn't a Last of Us remake. Put it that way. Uh, yeah. Well, I, the, I think any studio could be doing something other this, than that. This I don't think a Last of Us remake is bad. I just think no. they could do more interesting things yeah. being worked on. This, this to me just reeks of Sony just before the launch of the PS3 where they were like at the top of the game, like, yeah, our console's expensive, whatever, like it's complicated architecture. And although, in, look, in the long run, I think the PS3 did just fine. It didn't start mm -hmm. out great. It's like those first few years were shoddy and like, you know, filled with a lot of hurdles before the PS3 really hit its stride. And I just worry that the PS5, to me, like very exciting new console. And it's like, well, are the first three years going to be bad? Well, not bad, mm. but like, okay, before Sony's like, oh shit, we need to be experimenting with, you know, smaller IPs or, or different franchises. Like, I don't know. It, it's, I just don't like it when they, it feels like they're on their high horse saying like, we're Sony, we can do no wrong. It's like, I don't know when, when Microsoft yeah. this generation are busy pushing Game Pass and like, doing all the right things it's like you you just have to be careful like i really think yeah. microsoft are ticking all the right boxes and but i don't know like i've i've had a lot of friends of mine who are big sony fans going you know what the xbox is like kind of lucrative mm. it's like yeah mm. it's a, it's a different thing like microsoft isn't concerned about i mean they're still pushing their temple franchises and mm. there is no question in my mind all of their studio acquisitions were to create new ip uh, yeah but you know, at the same time, they bought all these studios and got them working immediately on new games, mm. new properties. Um, I just, the Sony thing, it, you know, it only takes one or two games that are really, you know, not up to the standard that people expect because now people expect this massively high bar of like mm. quality from Sony exclusives and Sony is putting so much money into them and this is the only thing they're pumping money into, presumably yeah. according to this report. You know, if you have another situation like A Day's Gone where it's profitable, you know, but maybe not to the level of a Last of Us 2 and it's definitely not seen critically in the same light, you know. Mm. If, you have, if you have a God of War sequel or a Horizon sequel that is like good but not fantastic, you've suddenly burnt years of like investment into yeah. these franchises that people have soured on like overnight. Mm. Um, and that's exactly what happened to Microsoft. Yeah. You know, Halo, Halo 3 came out fucking phenomenal. Halo 4 and 5 completely derailed that franchise. Yeah. And to the point where Infinite now has to hit. Like, it is such it, a big bet by Microsoft. I mean, you know? it, well, on Infinite, think about the fact that they showed gameplay and people like, oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that's not what, we, so what we're looking for. for gameplay. Yeah, for them. Microsoft delayed it yeah so they're like oh shit we have to delay yeah. it by like a year now just to you know make sure we hit so like so i mean the last thing i'll say on this thing is that some some studios i think still get a free pass for now because like god of all great success like i'd love to see a sequel but mm. like if we're getting to god of war four and five and six i'm like i love kratos mm. i love the franchise but like i do want to see these studios try different things like I think the reason God of War re the 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 what the reboot sorry that's what I'm looking for. I think the reason that hit so well is because like the original God of War okay. the yeah. original God of War was tired. Like we got yeah. a ton of them. We had three mainline games and some spin offs and some mobile versions and people just got sick of them. And it was clear like people were like eh, like Kratos, this, that, whatever. The reboots hit so well because you know that studio took a break and like reinvented the wheel. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, are Naughty Dog going to reinvent the wheel with The Last of Us when it feels like it came out just yesterday? If, uh, like, I don't know. That's, like, if they're working on a Last of Us remake, you know, and now they're working on this Last of Us multiplayer as well, and, you know, we don't know, but this Uncharted project that Sony Ben decided to bounce off of, like, are they working on another Uncharted? Like, I know Naughty Dog said they don't want to do another Uncharted, but, mm. like... But if that's what makes the money, then they're going to have to. Sony is the one that's in charge of them. So I, it's like I, 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 on, I on, the, on the, the Naughty Dog thing, it's like 
it would make more sense to me for them to remake the first Uncharted because like that game came out a long time ago. It feels like, oh, like, cool. Maybe maybe it would be cool to relive, you know, Nathan Mm. Drake's first story on modern hardware with like a, you know, retelling of that story. But like, I love The Last of Us, but it really feels like it didn't come out long long enough ago, long ago enough. (laughs) To, to, to me, it's just bizarre that, yeah. you know, we didn't get a new Naughty Dog IP last gen. Mm. Um, you know, we got one extremely late into the PS3 cycle with The Last of Us, but we didn't get one last gen. No. The, the first release from them this gen is likely to be a remake of The Last of Us. Like, Yeah, it's... I don't know. Like, man, like I, I, I love The Last of Us. Like, that game is still up there as one of my favorites of all time, but... Likewise, yeah. You can't tell me you wouldn't, you would take that over something new from Naughty Dog. Like, yeah. and maybe that's not their decision. That's a Sony decision. And that's what this news is so frustrating. Yeah. Like, why it's so frustrating? It's just like you have these excellent teams who have made these phenomenal games, but you are stifling yeah. their creativity by forcing them to work on these remakes and consistent sequels. Like, I get that new IP is risky, but Sony is in the position in terms of, you know, fan trust and sales and all of that to take these risks. They are in a better position than Microsoft to take these risks. Yeah. So, Well, I'd love to see how Returnal scores, just to like yeah. as an indication. I, like, Returnal needs to hit because I worry about Housemark. Because like, yeah. you know, Housemark really, they moved away from arcade shooters because they're like, these aren't working for us and that didn't work for them. And Returnal seems like a fucking Hail Mary by them. Mm. Um, if that game does not hit, I, I super worry for that studio. Yeah. So, yeah. We're going to work on the next Uncharted. Well, that's, oh, our, that's our Sony spiel. Should we fly through other news? <laughs> it just spends a yeah. lot of time. We're very passionate uh, about this. What um, can we say? Yeah. We're very, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There were a lot of weird takes yesterday to me. They're like, oh, but, you know, Demon Souls came out in 2009, and probably by the time. The Last of Us remake comes out, it'll be the same age between the original and the remake. It's like, yeah, but that's not the point. Like, yeah. you can't play original Demon Souls on PS4 or PS5. I can walk to my PS5 right now and play The Last of Us Remastered, which is a perfectly fine version of the game. Mm. You know, like, yeah. there are very different scenarios there. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, in other WTF news, E3 has confirmed its return. Mm. And is much, digital. much to my shock, a lot of the big players are have signed up. Yeah, that <laughs> which, is I. That's my biggest shock there. Including, it's like, um, I know, uh, yeah, including Capcom, Nintendo, Xbox, Take Two, Ubisoft, Konami, Warner Brothers, and Koch Media. Koch. Yeah. Koch, Koch Media. Koch, Koch like, Media. N- Nintendo and Xbox and Capcom and Take Two, like all of these, you could it's, do your own show. You really could. <laughs> To, to me, the big the big one that stands out is Xbox because yeah. Xbox wasn't even at the last physical event. Like I went in 2019, and Xbox wasn't in the LACC. They were in their uh, the uh, what's it the Xbox Theater or Microsoft Theater across the road, and they had all of their games there. They had their you know their showcase there. Yes, it was during the same week as E3, but they were literally not in the same building. Yeah. Um, so for them, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the ESA is a powerful. Uh, lobbying group because like they lobby for game makers in mm. you know US law so I guess there is a bit of give and take when yeah. it comes to supporting them but I also could see the scenario where especially companies like Xbox and Ubisoft could be like yeah we'll show off shit you know at E3 Digital but our our own streams are where the big announcements are going to take yeah. place yeah um, and Still. Nintendo will just put out a fucking direct. It doesn't even matter that it's E3 or not. They'll call I it. I know. E3. It's it's like we're gonna just do a direct over E3. Which, yeah. look, it's weird because while I'm critical of this choice as a gamer, it gets me excited because I'm like, there's a week of big announcements. Which yeah, that's cool. What? E3 is still like, so, but Sony are like, nah, fam. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're not there. <laughs> nah, we're not. I mean, they haven't been at E3 since 2017, I think. They weren't yeah. there 2018 or 2019. So, yeah, not shocked by that. Um, but like you said, I'm glad that it's still happening. Mm. Um, it's cool that it's still happening. And I think um, 
you know, I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they really do think they can host a physical event next year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm dubious of that. I don't know. I think this year really needs to hit for E3. Otherwise, yeah. uh, well, I don't know. Maybe they just host a physical event next year and because people have been so starved by conferences. I was like, also thinking that like, it's, it's, it'll almost be the novelty of like, well, we missed it for two years. Yeah, like, that's also, I mean, that's entirely possible. So yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just glad that it's condensed in a week now because last year was a shit show <laughs> uh, with like oh, events Jeff, every Jeff, second day. Jeff Keighley still has his own own tricks up his sleeve, so don't worry. There's going to be Yeah, he's of... still doing Summer Game Fest, mm. but I think even he said it's going to be far more condensed this yeah. year um, because last year was a nightmare. It was just like every two weeks, there's like a new stream. My um, God. Yeah. So okay. yeah, that's uh, happening. What, what is it? 15th to 17th of June? Something like that? Yes. Where's the date? I think it, it's like also 12 to 15 June. I don't know. 11 to 15. Maybe that second week of June, some, somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to talk about next? Uh, Pac-Man 99 came out this week. This is uh, a surprise. <laughs> yeah, announced and launched the next day. So if you've played Tetris 99, kind of the same thing. You are playing normal Pac-Man against 99 other players. Mm-hmm. And the way they play is influencing your game. So it's like... If when they eat ghosts, they can send slow ghosts to your your board uh, that slow you down if you go through them, or additional ghosts that attack you, or stuff like that. So I've played a few few rounds. It is ridiculously fast. <laughs> like you can die in a game within ten seconds. Like Shit. it's it is compared to Tetris ninety nine. It is a whole it's other different. level of pace, and it's made me. Uh, reconsider if i was ever good at pac-man <laughs> i probably never was so well can, yeah. can i just say that i appreciate this trend of turning old games into battle royals it's yeah me too i think it's, it's pretty really cool. cool yeah it's 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 a cool it's a cool novelty um and it's cool that it's just included free with nintendo switch online so that's mm. rad yeah like nintendo pushing out these i mean what we've got pac-man we've we've had tetris what is the other one mario yeah, yeah but that's cool. uh, yeah but it's like just the idea that they're experimenting with these different franchises, I think it's really cool. Like they always, it's like this is this whole ninety nine thing is a franchise in itself now, and there's just different ways to put spins on it. I really like Tetris ninety nine. Like mm. I still play play it every now and then. Um, I'm still, still never at it. Game. Uh, <laughs> I've come close. Uh, it's I think I think it was actually I was playing it um when we were in Portugal for your wedding and I came like third and that's still my best. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> it, was that, it was that Portuguese air. Oh my God. It's just it just God. Empire. Um, I suppose let's just stick with retro quickly. A mint condition. Super Mario Bros. NES cartridge sold for yeah. a casual $660,000. It's a lot of fucking money. My God. Imagine, I don't know, just imagine you were one of those people where you visit your your parents in one of those old, old school American houses, you dig in the basement, you're like, oh, here's a box of my old stuff. And there's just a, oh, although this is a mint condition box. So yeah, this is like mint, mint, purposely mint. Purposely kept, uh, but still. Like, it seems like it was even kept in like a vacuum sealed box. It's, so like someone had the foresight to be like, you know, Super Mario Bros. is going to be a big deal. I'm just going to vacuum pack this thing yeah. for a lot of money. I mean... Yeah. Uh, this one was also like from a, a limited production run, it seems. So back before Nintendo ad- added the trademark um, Game Pack NES GP symbol to NES boxes. So it's a special box as well. Like, damn. Well, That's a lot. lot of money. I love the line that Darren, I think who wrote this was a Darren. Can only be Darren who wrote it. <laughs> so like the thing was sold for $660,000 at an auction. He says, what an absolute idiot. You can buy the game for like $5 on the Nintendo eShop. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you? Nintendo loves killing Mario games on his eShop. So who knows? Oh God. <laughs> who knows? Okay. Um, what do you want to bounce to next? Um, oh, Deathloop has been delayed again. Um, if you'll recall, it was meant to come out in February. It was pushed back to May. It was meant to come out in like a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but developers Arcane, uh, I think this is Arcane Leon in France, said Leon. they need more time with the game. So the game is now launching on September 14th. 
I obviously don't, I don't it's know. only coming to PS5 and PC at launch. So I think you tweeted saying, what does this mean for the exclu- exclusivity? Yeah, I'm curious. Thing? Like, like, is it from date of launch? It's like a year from today or like, no, no, you had the exclusivity from May or whatever, like yeah May like next I, year, you... I, w- I would love to know what the the deal was like, like you said w- does the deal start when the game actually launches mm. or was there a you know penciled in date um you know like on the contract saying yeah from may that's when the exclusivity thing is working i don't know i don't know um what else do we have here uh grand theft auto 5 is coming back to game pass which is yeah that's weird i i can't recall a game that left game pass and then came back so i don't know if this is the first one but uh look i could be wrong but i I think some smaller games do go in and out maybe like over the years that game pass has been around but i mean grand theft auto 5 is like a big not just any game it's a game that's just continues to be to to print money (laughs) for or Rockstar coming back to to Game Pass. And it's interesting because like I think people obviously play the single player game, but I think most people find enjoyment in the online component where you can spend actual money. Um yeah. just give Rockstar more of your money. <laughs> but like you yeah. mentioned earlier, like this is probably a hundred percent Microsoft being like, Hey, we'll pay you to have GTA yeah, get it back, back on. on. Just, get it back on. Just yeah. like another few months, you know. And I do wonder, like, will this go off again, and then will we have Red Dead Redemption Two make a reappearance? Because that also was on at a time uh, for a little while, not too long. Yeah, it, it feels like Rockstar can only have one game on there at a time. They're just yeah. like, nah, you you had Red Dead Redemption Two. Nah, you've no nah, now nah, you you got to take that off. You've got to put on GTA something yeah. like that. So yeah. I don't know. But that's cool. Um, if you've never played it, I think it works really well on new consoles as well. So that's yeah. great. I mean, it's a two-generation old game. <laughs> yeah, and it's being re-released for PS5 for and PS- Xbox. Which <laughs> um, is just crazy. Um, I think just quick fire news. The Resident Evil reverse open beta was shut down after being live for just seven hours. Oh, I think, I think I this... I think this game looks silly, but I still want to kind of give it a try. I mean, we're getting Resident Evil Village. It it comes bundled with, so... I really fucking hate the visual style <laughs> of it. Like, it really bugs me. It's like self-shaded, cartoony... I, I don't know. It re- I, I, I don't like it at all. Like, <laughs> I think it looks gross. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at this nemesis... On the front, yeah, and he I just mean, looks gross. No, I don't like Super it. shiny and stuff. No, no, no. And you see that little, uh, that little, I don't know, that amphibian goober thing. I mean, just oh, look yeah. at the screenshot there. You've got Jill Valentine aiming a gun at Leon Kennedy with Jack Baker behind with who mm-hmm. the fuck knows what he's holding. And then just this amphibian zombie thing on the side just chilling. Like, what's going on here? I mean, I'd play that. <laughs> um, And then... What else do we have here? Crisis Remastered has been double remastered for PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Cool. Yeah, it got, it got an additional patch with additional graphical Stuff. options. Um, Digital Foundry found that there's still like huge performance issues with this game, even with the new graphical options. So yeah, go check out. Crisis is still, if you it's still putting hardware through its paces, even all these these many decades later. <laughs> it feels like... years ago. All the years. Um, I suppose let, let's just end on this. Okay, so the oh, head, so one more. The, the headline of this: I'm shocked to report that Resident Evil Village's <laughs> tall lady Dimitrescu. I don't know how to pronounce that. Has really big feet. Dimitrescu. <laughs> oh yeah, they. I, mean, I, I remember reading this. Yeah. So yeah, you. That's she, she has feet that measure 44 centimeters. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> And that's what we're choosing the collector's edition. Do oh my it. god, don't it's do that. Cowards. And that that's I think where we'll we'll leave news this week. You know, just just ponder that. Just just 
think of a 44 centimeter think foot of those and big feet step on you. remember being in school one of those rulers was 30 centimeters and i take one I and know, a half that, of that's those. immediately what i go to when i think of centimeters it's like how many rulers is that oh my god and that's it that's news